Hi, I'm Andre Yam. I'm the Executive Director of the Climate Reality Project Canada. At the Climate Reality Project, what we're trying to do is really to empower people from all walks of life to become effective communicators on the urgency of the climate crisis. We have three main programs. The first one, Leadership Core, really aims at recruiting, training, and engaging climate reality leaders to become those catalysts of change in their own communities of influence. At the Climate Reality Project Canada, we've also done a mapping of engagement across Canada. Through the data that emerged from that, we realized based on empirical evidence that the conversation on climate was not happening at the same pace nor with the same vocabulary in all the diverse regions of Canada. To able to support effectively the climate movement, we've identified four priority regions when we decided to dedicate more resources, more support to make sure that our climate activists are indeed effectively engaging in the conversation. So we have four regional engagement coordinators in Northern Canada, in the prairies, in rural Quebec, as well as in the Atlantic provinces, providing tailored support for local movement in those four regions. Our second program is the Community Climate Hubs. In Canada, we haven't met our targets. It is extremely important that we're able to empower people on public policy, so literacy, so that they're able to effectively engage and bring forward meaningful policy. One level of government that has uh, that is literally a keystone to accelerate a rapid transition is the local and municipal level. The municipal level is in charge of transportation, is in charge of green space, of waste management, and many more. And also, we usually notice uh, social injustice that are even enhanced in urban spaces. What we decided to do is make sure that we have people at the municipal level where also the climate conversation is less polarized, is less partisan, and make sure that they're able to address and speak to their municipal officers to ensure that the climate ambition is happening at the right pace and that we're raising the bar higher to ensure not only a reduction in emission but also improving the quality of life for all. Our community climate hubs are also an impactful network of over 36 hubs all across Canada that are also mutualizing resources, best practices to ensure that people are able to be supported and that those local actions are not isolated but a supporting one another and building all across Canada an effective movement to raise ambition. Another way we support our community climate hub at the municipal level is by collecting data. With our annual campaign of the National Climate League, what we do is we equip citizens to collect data of performance and demand transparency and accountability from the municipal um, council. What they do, we've set up 30 indicators of performance and then in each city we collect data on them. We demand that transparency from municipal council and then we rate the performance of the cities to really foster and enhance the solution that are already driving Canada towards uh, meeting our goals and our targets. Last year, the National Climate League received the Clean 50 Awards and is continuing to con collect data all across Canada. And our target to really ensure that climate, public policy, literacy is happening, we really wanted to make sure that decision-making spaces, such as the Conference of the Parties, are really able to increase their transparency and ensure that the parties, so the country's commitments, are being heard loud and clear so that civil society and the general public is able to hold those countries' engagement accountable and make sure that it translates into effective uh, policies on the domestic level. To be able to do that, we've been uh, part of a coalition of organizations in Canada from diverse sectors, academia, unions, NGOs, uh, women and gender organi defense organization, indigenous rights organization, and making sure that the general public and civil society in Canada is getting daily uh, feedback on what is happening in here at COP27. Another key element of COP27 is the climate justice component. We really wanted to ensure 
that voices that don't have access to decision-making spaces are being amplified in those spaces, that their voice, their concern, their apprehension, but also their demands for more ambition is resonating loud and clear inside the walls of COP in Sharm el Sheikh. What we've been doing with the Philippine African branch, we've been conducting in partnership with the AGEM Agenda, we've been conducting workshops all through the summer with poets, mentors, who have been leading those conversations and ensuring that people are able to connect with their relationship to the land and their bio regions. Through those, those uh, sessions, they've been able to read and get inspired by poems from all over the world and answer those poems, those pebble poems, with their own words, building another movement of solidarity and compassion connected to our deep relationship to the land. We have the chance of having those poems exhibited here at COP27, at the Indonesian Pavilion, at the Vulnerable Community Pavilion, and very soon at the Canadian Pavilion on November 16th. Moving forward towards COP15 on biodiversity, we also want to bring forward those voices in the public space in Montreal and Canada, through projection and through exhibition as well, where the words of our poets from all around the world are going to be able to take over and ensure that we're making a sound decision connecting to our hearts. Youth have been leading the climate conversation for a long time. That being said, the youth movement is not happening at the same pace and with the same tools everywhere. We've had students reach out to us and saying that they feel isolated on their campus and their desire to bring more climate action. They, we've also had youth saying they've been feeling intimidated as some student movement are very well driven and really well organized. What we decided to set in motion is resources and tools and training for students on those campuses where climate action and mobilization is not happening organically. And what we've been doing is that we set up a curriculum in three phases to ensure that those students are getting the proper training and support and resource to be able to lead effective action on their campuses to raise ambition but also to be connected by peer-to-peer -peer mentor from other student movement who are already setting the conversation at a faster pace all across Canada and even build bridges with our campus core program in the United States to really create a global movement around youth-driven climate action.